Now that President Muhammadu Buhari has finally addressed the nation, reactions are still trailing the broadcast. And warehouses in Oyo and Lagos filled with COVID-19 palliatives are discovered and looted. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeni. Welcome, this is Plus Politics. In reaction to the NSAS protest and the violence that followed, President Muhammadu Buhari addressed Nigerians yesterday, calling for the halting of the protest and stating that the review of police salaries was underway. He also appealed to protesters to resist the temptation of being used to cause chaos. However, his silence on the shooting of protesters in Lekki in a speech has sparked off a cyber war and even in traditional media. To discuss this with me, I have um, a public affairs analyst, Nelson Okujumi, whom I understand will join me very soon, and also Dotun Khazan, a legal practitioner and also a public affairs analyst. Let me start with you, Dotun. Good evening. Yes, good evening, Mr. Kayode. Yes, I remember the name Dotun Hazan, very, very conspicuous when it comes to series of protests, when it has to do with uh, Lekki Toge. But this time around, we're looking at the protest. And uh, I have a feeling that you must have been at the uh, center of the old theater uh, uh, of what really transpired. But how did you see the president address yesterday? Um, you know, some said he never said anything about Lekki, but some believe that he said it indirectly by asking the international community to do their fact-checking before, you know, making a conclusion. Well, uh, uh, it's quite uh, an unfortunate situation that uh, a president would invade that important statement, the all-important statement the whole world was waiting to hear from the uh, In view of the fact that uh, we commiserate with the departed souls and the injured big, uh, uh, heroes, I will not call them victims, uh, that uh, laid their lives before live bullets of the Nigerian military at the Lekki Toll Gate on the 28th of October 2020. Uh, most regrettably, uh, Mr. President, who is the father of the nation, who equally double as having that statutory power to announce justice as of yesterday, uh, missed that point when the whole world was waiting. Even foreign leaders uh, acknowledged and felt and empathized with the disease and the injured victim. But after it took our president 48 hours, it was the same address that the the the, the Lekki Togi protesters as of that day, after 12 days, were demanding that Mr. President should address us. That address never never came after the demise of those that fell by the bullet or those that were injured. But in view of those statements and the presidential statement of yesterday, Mr. President intentionally uh, waived the, the discourse on the Lekki Toge. This a vis the issue that was raised was not, has not been completely um, um, effective. They only received the document, but they've not effected because okay. it will take some time. Okay. But in view of that, Dr. Mr. President is yet to give justice Dr. by uh, setting uh, up an uh, inquiry. It's a conversation. It's a conversation. So I will appreciate if we can make our responses 
as brief as straight to the point so that we can uh, maximize the little time we have. I understand we have Nelson Kujumi on the line. Nelson, good evening. Good evening, uh, Coyote. Thank you for having me. Yeah, good to have you. I can see that it's dark there. But let's quickly hit the first question straight to you. Uh, a lot of backlash against the president's speech yesterday. I don't know whether you see differently that the president he was being accused of being silent on the lucky shooting. <clears throat> well, thank you very much. Uh, it's unfortunate we live in a society where uh, lack of values has taken the order of uh, the day or the order of our lives. A lot of the people were clamoring for Mr. President to speak. We're not really interested in the content of his uh, speech, but rather they wanted to hear what they wanted to, you know, uh, to, you know, put out the backlash, no matter what he says. But be that as it may, I think it is very important for us to get one fact straight: that Mr. President is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and when he makes any statements, you can, you know, you can, you better imagine the weight of that statement, or if you permit me to say that statement could be uh, interpreted to be the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And before Mr. President came out and you know, made that address, he made it very, very clear, which the president uh, acknowledged, that, look, I've had a series of meetings with my security chiefs and other stakeholders. He made it, he made it the opening line of his uh, address. And if anybody is still quarreling with what Mr. President said, I think they must recognize that uh, Mr. President does not speak for himself. He speaks as the father of the nation based on available evidences and facts table before him because he cannot be everywhere. He has to listen to, you know, information, you know, and whatever from various sources. He has to corroborate, he has to cross-check okay, to be sure, sure, you know, uh, as a father. Now, so let, me, let me stay with you uh, before I go back to Dr. Hazan. The question is whatever he said, that the approach in which he said it wasn't empathetic enough. People can't feel that passion of a father who lost of children. N you know, no clear, direct reference to the people no, that were killed. I, no, Kayode, I disagree absolutely with you. Because I've heard the statement of the president not showing empathy. And I went back and I read. He said, I am deeply pained. Go and look at that paragraph. Okay. What does it mean for a father to say, I am deeply pained? What else do they, oh, well, maybe some persons were waiting for him to shed tears while making presidential speech. But I'm sure he must have been, you know, cautioned, he must have been admonished, he must have been tutored that, look, Mr. President, don't go there and break down. Just maintain a straight face. We know that okay. you are grieving in your heart. You have to be strong. There are lots of people looking up to you, and your composure will, will you know, send out a lot of signals. Okay. So, Mr. President, like any other Nigerian, he was very pained about the unfortunate, you know, turnaround of the NSAS uh, protest that has become violent, okay. that has let, been let, let bring in. to acid. Thank you, Nelson. So, uh, anybody saying Mr. President and Patas, I don't know what they are looking for. Okay, let, let me listen to Dr. Hazan on that. You know, uh, Nelson disagreed with that uh, position that the president wasn't empathetic enough. Uh, are, are you beginning to see from what he said? Well, um, um, you, know, um, I, I, you know, sometimes where uh, we all see the reality on the ground, there is no how in, you can hide behind a finger. It's a rep Eastern Locuito case. That means the fact speaks for itself. There is no amount of um, apologetic statement from my brother over there that will cure the fact that the empathy is a real um, manifestation that you can't hide. We, we are talking about demand. The, the, the protesters are demanding for good governance. Their request is, is not criminal. Agenda is civil. Especially those that were at the Lekki toll gate. There was no record of violence in, within that precinct of that area. So we recorded some, some, some flashpoints of um, maybe violence in some states. But specifically, 
where they wrecked that havoc was not in a do state, was not in in Ekiti or uh, Oshogu, where we sought violent attacks against even government facility. At that area were, were thousands of Nigerians and children, women and adults. If Mr. Ikujumi could permit me, I please, I, I, I feel that pain even within me for a whole 48 hours, my mind was still bleeding. I don't know, maybe because there was, because even the way Mr. Kujimi is saying it shows that he himself lacked that empathy personally. He should okay. also feel, he himself needs to Not come his way. You can Not see. You are, I'm, tr I'm the moderator of this conversation. You can stay on the issues without definitely mentioning or attacking the person who says it, please. I appreciate that. We are not, we are not attacking each other. Okay. It's a straightforward discourse. So, but as far as we are concerned, let us move forward from there. Let us leave the issue of empathy. Let us go into the statement and consider if Mr. President is showing us love in view of the fact that he had offered the, um, the health power and all the entire program for youth empowerment, in view of our cries and woes, how accessible were those agendas? If Mr. President was aiming at conversation, where is the table and for who and who will be on that table? Were there templates on, on the parameters on how we go about that? These are issues of immediate national concern. So we love our president. We do not hate our president. All Nigerians love Mr. President. But that doesn't mean that we, we should not, we should okay, be, Dato, be gagged from Dato, telling the truth to power. Dato, re reviewing the statement, like you said, let's leave uh, the issue of empathy behind. The president also reminded us that um, the salary review of the police men and women were already on, I mean, was on the way. Is that soothing enough? That's to remind us that the police reform is on course. It's a, it's a good omen. We must, we must acknowledge some facts. The, the federal government were humane enough ab initio to respond swiftly to the demands of the NSAS protesters. In view of the five demands, the, those demands were acknowledged when Governor Babajide Songulu went and discussed on behalf of the protesters, specifically from Lekki Toge, for and on behalf of all other NSAS protesters in the whole world, even as far as the, the protesters were nationwide. But we must equally appreciate the fact that the federal government gave a template on reformation. On the issue of police salary, we thank Mr. President for approving that. It is highly uh, uh, encouraging. We want more. We want better offer that now affects the the youth of this uh, nation, which I myself belong to. I've, I, I have been on the on the same template uh, 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 threshold of protest before now. I know what it takes to demand for what is your right or what you believe the government must provide. Okay. Okay. But in view of that. I believe there was a missing link somewhere. There okay. was no, no um, um, template, a table, between the NSAS protesters and the government. Okay, we'll come back to that. A lot of public uh, speakers, communication experts believe that uh, irrespective of the criticism that the president was delivering that speech belatedly, he could have changed the tempo by addressing the issue of those soldiers whose command were they acting on, and since yeah. the international community is talking, do you share that opinion? Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, as a lawyer, there is what is called men's rest and octo's rest when a crime is committed, meaning there must have been a mental intention. Who authorized? What is the nexus of the issue? As far as Mr. President was informed by the same service chief who must have misrepresented the real issue. The military, the, the Nigerian army, proved before us that the video was a, was a mimic video 
But that, if that was what they informed Mr. President, we should have expect the obvious, that it is the, the blame also have been that an independent commission of judicial uh, inquiry ought to have been set up that yesterday, because we don't expect Mr. President to just throw blame and remove the service chief or anybody. There must have been an investigation. That was what we expect yesterday. Okay. If that a commission of inquiry was set up with a mandate would have come next. to fish out the, the, the military boys who order, who authorized Okay, them. doctor. How did they arrive at the shooting? Who gave the order? Military don't just shoot. Okay, doctor, I, I'll come back to you. I understand Nelson is back. He was going to uh, react to that question. Okay, Nelson, back to you. Yes, Kadi. Uh, I think we must get to see by discussing how to move the nation forward on regards to this issue. I don't think we should pander to sentiments. Uh, Dr. made a statement that everybody loves Mr. President. It is not possible, my brother. Don't come here and try to grandstand. Nobody can be loved by everybody in any society. Then that is for that. I must clear that. Then secondly, the army authorities have come out clearly to say that they didn't deploy their men. The Lagos state governor visited the scene and even visited some of the so-called some of the supposed victims of that shooting. And the Lagos State Governor made it very clear that he didn't authorize it and that he was not in the know. He promised to set up a commission of inquiry. Anybody who wants peace, anybody who is interested in, the tran in tranquility in our society, we hold this peace rather than waiting for Mr. President, who has been briefed, um, I suppose, by the governor, that, look, we saw some men in uniform. The army authorities have denied that these are men. And we live in a society today that every day you see fake policemen, you see so, uh, soldiers, you see journalists, you see fake medical doctors, you see fake nurses. And we live in a society that if we are really serious about moving our society forward, it is for us to be circumspect when issues like this are on the front burner. You don't expect Mr. President to speak, come and speak on an issue which the institution that has been alleged has come out clearly to say, look, we don't know anything about this issue. We didn't deploy men. And if you look at the pictures, we, you cannot put a name to any of the officers. All you saw were some person putting on military camouflage. Who knows? I'm not speaking for them. But I'm very, very much interested in us getting to the end of this matter. Because that was part of the reason why Mr. President caution the international community that, look, we appreciate your concern, but please get your facts right before making hasty pronouncements. And for me, that is the line I would talk, that on the Lekki massacre, it has become a subject of controversy. That, look, who, who are those people that came there shooting? Who authorized them? Where are those people that were alleged to have been massacred? Where are those? I watched Channel's television yesterday. And Olu Phillips was at the Reddington Hospital to see the victims of that shooting. And he said, and I quote, that the hospital said they have been discharged. And he said they are going to get to the end of the matter. We saw the governor visited the, an hospital, and we saw victims on the floor, like you are showing right here on the, on the screen. So for me, I want to hold my peace. I want to join, jump into the fray and start making allegations okay. that at the end of the make me look foolish. I want to have an open mind in this discussion that, look, the Lagos State Governor has promised that he's going to set up a panel of inquiry okay, to Nelson. unravel what happened at Lekki Toll Gate. And that is my stance, that I want to wait and see what comes out of whatever role some of us can play in ensuring that justice is done to the Nigerian awesome. society in availing the authorities of the fact one should be ready to do that. Awesome, awesome. So... I hope we are not going to have a case of unknown soldier. You remember that popular song? But let me quickly get the final comment from Dotu on this subject because we will have to move to the second topic. So Dotu, I know you are talking about the way forward. I know you are talking about the issue of empathy being discarded and how do we ensure that the focus is not lost in us? Because the president also mentioned that yesterday, that the protest well, that was peaceful was hijacked and misdirected. So how do we well, get the direction right? Well, 
Well, firstly, I must acknowledge the fact that uh, we condemn in its entirety the arsonist hoodlums uh, uh, that were committing criminal uh, banditry all around the, uh, the country, especially in Lagos State. And uh, in as much as uh, we will be demanding the those that committed such a uh, criminal offense to be arrested and prosecuted, they're moving forward. As far as we are concerned, I speak on behalf of Nigerian youth. Nigerian youth are more in demand of, re, of good governance. In terms of what we have laid presently, we've laid some, 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 some positions. I'm, I'm presently in Abuja as I speak. I've, we've, we've had press conferences on issues of, of discourse. I let, so what we laid before the government is that the, it is high time the government come up with national uh, a, a youth development commission, national youth development commission, as part of the solution. From the Nigerian police, they need to come up with what is called police and youth relations committee in order for us to properly monitor the reformation that is ongoing within the police and also the manifestation of whichever unit, all rank and file, not the staff unit or SWAT, or all rank and file, Nigeria needs to be up to date. We also make it clear that we need a youth rights act, whereby uh, 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 demand and provisions in chapter two can be uplifted and be legalized by virtue of the present demand. Okay, Dr. What all those things that are there are goodies that will make a nation grow. We Dr. equally look at key areas. Dr. I, I'm so scared that our time is far spent, but let me just remind you, in case you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can do that and also be a regular you know, commentator on that. You can drop more of these solutions. Trust me, it will get to the right quarters and uh, the needful will be done. Thank you once again, Dotun Khazan, a public affairs analyst and also a legal practitioner. Thank you for your time. And I don't know whether I should say thank you to Nelson Okujimi because we still have you here for the second topic. And so we'll take a short break now. And when we return, warehouses filled with COVID-19 palliatives discovered and looted. That is all for discussion. Please don't go anywhere.